Welcome to Crema Media's Polity, I'm Brad Doubleman. I'm at the South African Institute for International Affairs in Bramfontein to meet with Yarek Turyansky to discuss his recent findings of South Africa's African Peer Review Mechanism Implementation Report. Yarek, please can you give some background detail to the African Peer Review Mechanism Implementation Report, or APRM, with regards to its formation and its history? Well, if we look at APRM, we have to look back to NEPAD in 2001. And um, when NAPAD was formed, it was basically a compromise between um, MAP and uh, the Omega Plan, uh, which were different um, initiatives produced by the Anglophone African states and the Francophone African states. Uh, NAPAD was seen as a compromise that would incorporate both of them. But uh, due to the fact that uh, internally it was said that NAPAD resembles too much other already existing development initiatives in Africa, um, even ones like the um, poverty reduction strategic papers or any of those, uh, it was decided that in order to make NAPAD more unique and to differentiate itself from other African development initiatives, the African peer review mechanism or the APRM needs to be included um, to provide a spark to provide something different. Um, because it was supposed to uh, be a review of uh, governance in African um, countries that are signatories to the mechanism by using the concept of peer review, meaning that uh, it would be pretty much unprecedented because previously Africans, African leaders would be very reluctant to criticize each other and uh, we've heard of instances of some of them saying this is not an African way to deal with an African problem when it would come to publicly scolding either one of them. Um, scolding their counterparts. Um, so the decision was made to include the APRM as the new in NEPAD to truly make it different and uh, South Africa obviously played a big role in it because Thabo Mbeki, the former president, was uh, one of the main creators behind both NEPAD and the APRM. So in layman's terms, the APRM is a very much innovative and unprecedented peer review um, mechanism in Africa, which entails countries signing up to it and then being peer reviewed by their states, which would include both them looking at their own governance struggles, issues and problems um, and achievements as well. And then um, the APRM secretariat sends a review team to that country to discover what it thinks of it. And then the two views, the view how the country sees itself and then how the review team sees it, are combined in the country review report. And then the APRM panel um, gets together to make recommendations on the way forward, which are then discussed with the government of the country under review and they result in the NPOA, the uh, National Program of Action, which basically entails how the country is going to try to improve its um, governance. The country is then reviewed by all the presidents, uh, all the heads of states of um, the countries that have signed up to the APRM. Um, and then once the report is published, the next step is for the country to implement those recommendations it agreed upon and to publish annual implementation reports. So South Africa has published its first implementation report and uh, I've written a research paper on it which will form the basis of this interview. What commitments were made in the National Plan of Action? If you look at the commitments, it's um, very much your, I wouldn't say cliched, but uh, your very much run-of-the-mill issues such as corruption, HIV, AIDS, violence against women and children, gender equality, land reform, etc., etc. So in that sense, if we look at the APRM and POA, and if we compare it to the governmental program of action, which uh, forms the basis for um, the annual speeches and the, the annual goals um, that the government of South Africa is trying to set, they're not actually that different. All the main issues are there. The main difference comes in the fact that the APRM report is much more extensive, while the GPOA can be fit on um, just a couple of pages while the APRM report is about 400 pages long. You suggest in your paper that South Africa has largely failed to implement the National Plan of Action. Please describe some of its faults and deficiencies. The main problem with the first implementation report that was produced by South Africa is that it doesn't actually answer the questions that it should. 
correct. So the report doesn't really look at the MPOA and then says what South Africa did to address the issues raised in the reporting period um, during 2007-2008. Instead, it looks more like a 10 or 15 year, year review of the country following the 1994 democratic elections. So most of the implementation report focuses on the achievement um, between now and the 1994 elections. Obviously, the achievements listed are quite commendable because the country has gone a long way forward, but this is not what the implementation report is about. The implementation report was supposed to look at the country post-2007 with its existing um, governance problems and issues and challenges and then say how the South African government tried to address the recommendations made by the APRM. You say in your paper that the context in which the report was written had an effect on its outcome. How so? Um, well, if we look at the transition of the South African government, um, the report was written um, when Halima Motlante was the interim president. So the country was in quite a bit of a political flux, uh, facing some uncertainty. Uh, we just lost one president and the interim president came in and everyone knew that he's not going to stay for too long. Um, apart from that, following the end of the APRM review in 2007 in South Africa, the APRM pretty much stopped being prominent. Um, most of the people in the DPSA, which was the lead department for the APRM in South Africa, have left. Uh, Minister Geraldine fraser Molaketi has moved on. She was replaced by Minister Beloy. Um, and uh, in fact, most of the people who were working on the APRM have left. So there was a big loss of institutional memory. And um, there was also the change in the administration and then the change in the presidency, which has undoubtedly affected the uh, quality of the report. How do you recommend that South Africa can improve the implementation of the APRM? Well, first of all, a champion needs to be created for it within the South African government. Um, the head of the APRM and governance program at SIA, Stephen Goose, and I have conducted many interviews with uh, senior government officials in the presidency, the MNE, the treasury, um, etc. And uh, they all told us that the APRM does not form a part of their daily lives. It is not really a living document. So they told me um, and Steve that in none of the ministerial meetings does anyone whip out the APRM report and says, but we have committed to doing this and this. And they also said that when the APRM meetings do take place within the government, it's usually the junior personnel that gets sent to them, which obviously indicates that uh, the government does not really take the APRM seriously. Um, we discovered that it is very likely that the South African government signed up to the APRM not because it genuinely wanted to discover the governmental problems and challenges in the country, but rather because it felt that it needs to set the example for other African countries by being one of the pioneers and therefore to encourage them to also sign up. Since Thabo Mbeki was one of the creators of NEPED and the APRM, it was seen as essential that South Africa is one of the first countries that is going to um, undergo the review and therefore is going to encourage others to do so. Um, it is also seen that uh, we can look at the APRM reporting with a certain political context as well because that was all happening during Polokwane and the ANC conference and Mbeki obviously didn't want to open up himself and his presidency to too much criticism which would um, play into the hands of his political opponents. So the South Africa tried to maintain a very tight grip on the process um, which was obviously noted by all the media and civil society and uh, it was widely criticized by it. Apart from that South Africa was also expecting to receive a very positive review um, because it was going up against countries like Ghana and uh, Rwanda. Um, but uh, what it did not take into account is that the APRM does not face countries off against each other and rank them saying that South Africa's got better governance than Ghana, but then Ga Ghana's got better governance than Rwanda. No, instead the country is compared to its own potential. And uh, it was in the view of both civil society within South Africa and also the review team that uh, South Africa could do more in order to improve its um, governance. Do you think that the APRM implementation report adds value to the country's strategies on governance? It certainly does. If we look at the APRM report, 
One of the issues that it flagged back in uh, September 2007 is uh, the rising xenophobia in South Africa. Um, the government actually chose to disregard that, even though it was listed as a cross-cutting issue, meaning that it was seen as very important by um, those who did the review and uh, said that they are doing enough to address the problem. Now, they actually weren't doing enough to address the problem and as we know, in uh, May 2008, the, violent, the xenophobic violence broke out. Um, so, in that sense, we could see that the APRM tried to act as an early warning tool and try to preempt um, something and uh, flag to the South African government that this is a serious issue and something must be done about it. But unfortunately, the recommendation was ignored. Um, apart from that, like I said, even though the main issues are to one extent or another covered in the governmental GPOA, as I already mentioned, the APRM report goes into much deeper um, detail when it comes to them. And we must also remember that uh, if one would say that since the two cover the same issues, it doesn't matter if it gets addressed in the GPOA because then the issue gets addressed. If South Africa has signed up to a continental mechanism, it must follow on with it because of its role on the continent and it must set the example for others. So if it wanted to set the example for others by being one of the pioneering countries, it must then follow through with it and um, also follow up on the implementation and on the reporting, which unfortunately has thus far been very poor. Thank you, Yarek.